contacted by John and Dave, inviting me to come over and take a look at Mandalorian. They said they'd love my opinion. That should have been a giveaway right away. So I went over and they asked me to do a voice for uh, a character that was in the cantina. When they went from the original trilogy to the sequels, obviously there's this huge gap in time where there's all these untold stories, but I just assumed they'd get an age appropriate actor, you know, because, and I didn't really think about it all that much. I just thought, oh, if they want to tell stories of Luke post Return of the Jedi, uh, I wonder who they'll get. When they said they were going to use the de-aging process they used in, in the Marvel movies, I was just gobsmacked. I didn't answer right away. I mean, I had to think about it, but the more I thought about it, I thought this is like really an opportunity that was completely un unexpected, but something that almost was a, a responsibility. In other words, if they're saying they want me to do this, how can I say no? He'd watch me do the scenes, I watch him do the scenes, so we tried to match each other. I would look at the monitor, and of course the image is small, but I thought, oh my gosh, he looks more like me than me. It was just uncanny, this, this guy. And, and he's a good actor. I said to the guys, I said, look, you don't have any worries for me. I've learned a long time ago how to keep a secret. I mean, that empire secret, I had to keep it for like a year and a half. But that's before social media. I said, all it takes is one person in a lab treating the film, you know, color correction. There's just so many uh, variables and so many unknowns. One person who sees that and and goes on social media and goes, guess what I saw today? I remember joking with George. I said, you know, when Return of the Jedi ends, it's all over for me. And that would almost be like taking three movies to tell you how James Bond earned his license to kill. And then it's over. No Dr. No, no Goldfinger, no For Much With Love. And I was joking, really, but it, it did occur to me that he went from a farm boy then to a trainee to a Jedi, and yet then it's over, and there's no tales of you know the, his exploits as a Jedi. So it was nice to, to have a rare look at what he would be doing prior to establishing the Jedi Academy, but post-Jedi. John sent me links to reaction videos, which were just, you know, because I don't get to see these things in the audience. To see grown men cry and just the people screaming their heads off. I mean, it was really, really thrilling for me to see them enjoying it so much. We love the fans. I mean, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. They are the most loyal, passionate group of people that I've ever encountered. I just have a deep gratitude to their enthusiasm over the years. I never expected that, and it's it's just been something that I really cherish. If you enjoyed this episode, and frankly, even if you didn't, don't forget to subscribe. Do it! And if you want to help spread the word, please give this video a thumbs up and tell your friends to subscribe. Please check out the official Star Wars Coffee merchandise, and don't forget to check out all of the content playlists on this channel, including The Rise of Skywalker, The Mandalorian, and much more.